for Motor Week, John Davis. Well, hello and welcome again to Motor Week. We'll be taking a ride on the import wave first this week with a look at Alfa Romeo's latest attempt to make a splash in the sports sedan market. It's their all-new Milano. Then it's on to the performance pool with a drive in two specialty Camaros. A limited edition IROC Z with a 5.7 liter V8 Corvette engine and a hot off the assembly line convertible. Pat Goss will be answering some letters from viewers with car problems once again. And instead of a car preview, Beth Nardone will take a look back this time at 100 years of the automobile. And it all starts with a so far unfamiliar Alpha. You see, it'll be trying to carve its niche in a country that's home to every nationality. Well, that's fine for people, but not always when it comes to cars. Italian cars, for instance. Now, U.S. car buyers have had a tough time being tolerant about them. What with rust and reliability problems, to say nothing of those famous but weird Italian driving positions. Not too many buyers have wanted makes from south of the Alps. But this new Alfa Romeo sedan that we're going to talk about, called the Milano, promises to change what American drivers think of Italian cars once and for all. Now, Italians would call that troppo difficile, very difficult. But Alfa has plans that are even more ambitious than that. In 1985, Alfa Romeo sold just over 3,900 cars in North America. By 1990, they expect to sell 30,000 a year. Much of that expectation is pinned on this Milano sedan, with 6,000 of them due to come ashore this year. The Milano's name comes from the most industrial city in Italy, and Alfa Romeo's home. In Europe, the car is called the 75, but the Milano is much changed from the European version, and that's the key to Alfa's ambition. The Milano was tailored for the North American market and is built on a special assembly line. The only thing that can make it more American is the UAW. Alfa Romeo says quality control is better than usual on that line. And judging by the quality of finish on our car, we believe it. And the Milano gets as standard what the 75 gets for options, and then some. Power windows, for example. They come on all three Milano trim levels. On the silver quadrifoglio, the gold, and this platinum version. Quadrifoglio means four-leaf clover, so the model designations come from both the precious metals and Alpha's symbol. Inside, the Milano will accommodate almost any size driver, comfortably. While the gas pedal is a bit too high, the Milano has a tall roof, seats with plenty of adjustment, and a steering wheel that telescopes and adjusts for rake. Now that's downright un-Italian, and so is the dash. It's practical. There's plenty of ventilation here, and the controls are more logical than on any recent Alpha, even if they are too far down on the dash for eyes on the road operation. But right in line with Alpha tradition, there's a tachometer and an oil pressure gauge and all sorts of idiosyncrasies to remind you that this Alfa Romeo wasn't designed by rote. Who else would dare to put window controls on an overhead console and use a horseshoe-shaped emergency brake handle? Only Alfa Romeo. But then there are the luxury conveniences Americans expect, such as remote-controlled mirrors and an inside trunk release. There is no outside release. The trunk itself is wide, deep, but very short, and has a semi-low liftover height. At the business end of the Milano, you'll find the same 2.5-liter overhead cam V6 as in the Alpha GTV. It's fuel-injected and makes 154 horsepower with 152 pound-feet of torque. A 190-horse 3-liter version will power a fourth Milano variation due out in 1987. Either way, power runs from the engine to a GTV 5-speed transaxle at the rear which, by the way, has a smooth, precise feel. If you want an automatic, you'll also have to wait until next year. But right now, it doesn't take this Milano long to get to the end of a quarter mile, just 17.2 seconds with a cross-the-line speed of 78, quite quick. And all along the way, the Milano makes a crisp, clean exhaust note that'll please the most demanding Alfisti. Like most Alfa engines, the Milano's is happiest at higher revs. But a zero to 60 time of 8.5 seconds shows that plenty of power is available for highway speeds. Our only complaint here, the Alpha's tail squats down noticeably at full throttle after a gear change. Of course, the Milano suspension has something to do with that. It's Alpha's traditional De Dion design at the rear. The front gets A-arms with coil springs. While the suspension seemed too compliant under acceleration, it didn't in handling. 
It corners with moderate plow and gentle body lean. The rack and pinion steering transmits plenty of feel, and all three Milano levels feel about the same. Good. The Blackman Quattrofoglio gets slightly larger tires and a front anti-sway bar. Overall, the Milano shows an agility and fun to toss around nature that Alphas have always been known for. For stopping, the Milano has four wheel disc brakes. Their rear ones mounted inboard at the transaxle, also like the GTV. They pull the Milano down from 55 and an average of 110 feet, well above average. As for the ride, it's nicely firm, yet too much rough road vibration and noise reaches the passenger compartment. And then there's fuel economy. The EPA rates the Milano at 18 city and 25 highway. Very reasonable, especially for such a fine performer. So the Alpha Milano scores a long list of hits with us. It does a fine job of blending traditional Alpha virtues with mainstream appeals for American sports sedan buyers. We love the spirit of its engine and firmness of its controls, but we also appreciated its many standard creature comforts and its high level of finish quality. On the miss side, we found the Milano vibrated a bit on bad road surfaces, and we also think the placement of some controls is a little inconvenient. Even taking the misses into account, how much would you expect to pay for this car? 18 or maybe $20,000? Well, try $12,850 to start for the silver Quadrifoglio Milano. And we're told this Highline Platinum Quadrifoglio will come in under $20,000. Not bad for cars that come mighty close to being Italian BMWs. When Alfa Romeo's president, Ernesto Vittori, introduced the Milano, he said he wanted Americans to learn how to spell Alfa Romeo properly. With the Milano, we figure it won't take too long. And who knows, you might even learn how to spell Quadrifoglio.